Welcome back to the advanced animations tutorial for GIFBot. At this point, the assumption is that you have set up your bot, you have gone through authentication, and you have at least one animation. I'm actually running off of a debug build, and so I have a lot of animations. So you see I went hog wild with all the various categories, um, and I have everything in place for my, uh, you know, for, for my stream. Now, if you want to see more advanced options, because that first tutorial that took you through setting up a single animation is not comprehensive, there's actually a lot more that you can do with the animations. You'll need to go to the animations editor. Um, to access that, there is a menu item over to your left called animations. Click on that, and that will take you over to the animations editor which still has like the wrong menu. I'm gonna shift refresh this real quick because I don't know what's going on there. It's very confusing. Okay, sometimes <laughs> when you get a new version, do a hard refresh. <laughs> Good Lord, professional, I can tell you that. Um, so you have a few options here that are available to you. You can add a new category. You can enable all of the animations or you can disable all of the animations. These are little helpers here because if you want to do things like swap out for like seasonal events or a special event, you can just like disable everything. And then just for the event, let's let's say, um, you know, if I come down here, I have St. Jude, let's say I just wanted these active, then I could go to this category and I can enable all of the animations in there and everything else remains disabled. So you can do it by category, you can do it globally. Now, um, we will go into uh, just one of these animations here um, and I will show you all of the options. So at the very top, you have a test button and that will let you actually play the animation um, and we'll, uh, we'll test it for you. Um, so you can test volumes and such. You can change the category. So you can move this to another category if you want. If you like this one, you can clone it and it will take all of this data and put it in a new command. You can delete it. You can cancel any changes you've made or you can push those changes to the server, which is remember is this little window here. Um, I'm gonna make this a little bigger just so we can get everything into this video like that. Yeah, there we go. All right, so you can disable. When it's disabled, it cannot be used at all. It will not be triggered by anything and only you can trigger it. Um, if you don't want this to appear in the output, uh, if you're using the chat command to display um, all of the available animations, then you can hide this. I hide the ones that are done via channel points, hype train and other alerts because nobody, can, if you can't execute it from chat, then you need to hide it. Um, then there's the command name. You can change this. That is totally up to you. Um, your visual and your audio, uh, neither are, are required. Um, if you want, excuse me, you can have an audio file only or you can have the visual. Um, you can actually come in here and uh, adjust the volume and you can test. Excessive blazer use may lead to blazer gasms. <laughs> and, and stop, of course. Um, so if you want, you can test the volume in here. That's definitely a new feature. Um, timing is all through here. So like basically all the stuff that was in the initial setup is in here. Um, what you will see is a more advanced option called audio offset. That's if you have a paired GIF with an audio file and you wanna kind of try to sync them up. Now, in general, I tell people, go into Premiere <laughs> and make a video, but just in case you wanna do this, cause like GIFBot, honestly, because of the name, used to only be for GIF files. So it's understandable. Um, but go ahead and, and you can use this to kind of delay the audio file after the visual. Um, access levels, you will see all of the ones that were from the tutorial in here, but you'll also see user group. And if you select user group, you can actually select a user group or you can set it for a specific viewer. I do this for people who have donated a hundred dollars or more to St. Jude, for example. Um, I don't personally, 
uh, force people to be subscribed to use it. So like, for example, if the user uh, subscribed tier three, then they can only have access to this uh, if they remain subscribed. I don't do that, but you can use that. And then there's bot only. By default, bot only kind of applies for a lot of things. Um, so like for uh, channel points and tips and cheers, uh, but you can always flag it as bot only on your own if you want to do that. Just It's like extra protection. It's like wearing two masks instead of half of one, over, you know, not covering your nose. Um, you can go in and edit the position. This is a video, so let's actually find one that's not a video. Uh, that might be a little easier to see. Uh, here's one. Oh, this is great. There's Batman. No, that's not great. What am I doing? Boat snack. I'm going to boat snack and a position. Okay, so boat snack is down here, and you can see, like, you can actually move it around. But the thing to understand is when you're moving it around, it's not saving the position or applying it. You need to, after you've moved it, apply the changes to the animation. Otherwise, it's not going to uh, persist. So that that uh, you need to make sure that you do that. Um, so if I move it up here and I click save changes, it's gonna snap back because I didn't take the information from this control and apply it to the animation. Um, so make sure you do that. All of these things here, you have to click apply changes to animation and then save. Um, trigger options are where things get really crazy and you can start doing a lot of really fun things. So you can always have a cheer requirement. If you just wanna have something that's for all cheers, uh, then you do zero. Otherwise, it's going to be an exact match. So if you have a scare alert at 666, this amount needs to be 666. Um, so for example, I have BitBoing, and I go over to trigger options. BitBoing shows up for 50 bits. It's just like the cute one. You can also turn on subscription alerts. You can do this by uh, the number of months somebody has been subscribed. Um, or you can have zero for a catch all. What it will do is when somebody subscribes or resubscribes, it will choose the highest qualifying animation. Um, so if, if the person has subscribed for 13 months, um, and you have a zero, a six and a 12, the 12 will fire. Um, you can also do it by tier if you want to kind of nail it down that far. Um, you can do gift sub bombs. Also, if you do zero, it's going to trigger for all of all of the gift subs, uh, regardless of the amount that are given. Or you could have like a really intense one go off for a hundred subs. Um, you know, whatever floats your boat. So um, we'll turn that off. And then hype train. Hype train's great. Let me actually show you here. So I have this go off. And it's just an audio file. Like I haven't done anything really intense yet with this because we just did this in testing, but. Live train level <laughs> one reached. Yeah, well, I missed my calling. Uh, so anyway, so when you turn on hype train leveling, um, it'll trigger when that level is reached. Um, so right now you can go up like as high as you want it, but <laughs> technically there's, there's only, uh, there, there's only the those few, uh, like f I think five levels that they notify us about. So, um, okay, channel point rewards, and I'll actually go into channel points right here and show you how these work. So this is this is definitely one of those kind of um, features that from Twitch, it lacks an API. So I apologize. I'm doing what I can with it. Um, there is a wall of text here to kind of describe to you uh, what's going on and how to use this. Um, so you can, uh, dis this can be, it's automatically disabled. Um, you can trigger on all channel point redemptions. So if you just want to have an alert to let you know that a channel point redemption happened, um, then you can do that and it will just alert you. Um, so you or your mods can go in and look at the queue. Um, you can trigger by the redemption message. 
So it would require a user to give input. And so if you only allow people to use GIFBot through channel points, um, then they would have to put the command they want in the user message. Um, I actually don't use this feature a whole lot, but it is there. Um, or, which I love, you can tri trigger by the number of points spent. So it doesn't require anybody to input anything. It just, it just triggers by that. Um, so for example, blazer, this, the blazer gasm joke for 20,000 points that will go off. But, um, I also have, um, I have a bunch of, I wow, a bunch of them. I've like demon, demon voice activated. So if they go into channel points here, it's 6,660 points required. Um, I also, it, one, because it's not listed in here, but if you put it in the reward title, you can use the regurgitator, which is this feature here, which we haven't, <laughs> we haven't gone over yet. That's the St. Jude thing that I got tortured into doing. Um, but animation roulette's a big one. A lot of people like to do that. Um, so you just put the command somewhere in the title, um, and it will, it will show you. Um, so the, the one thing that I will say, and I'll bring this over so you guys can see this, uh, these are my awards. Um, so you can see here's GIFBOT roulette and just somewhere in it, you need, you need the command and that's it. Um, so when I go into edit on this one though, one of the things I do is I skip the request, the, the reward request queue. That's a lot of words that sound alike. Um, I skip it because if, if you, if you have that disabled, it'll play when you, when it enters the queue and it'll also play when it exits the queue. So if a mod goes in and accepts like checks off that that a viewer has used this reward um it redeems twice basically so that's just a heads up for for you guys because that that definitely is a very annoying thing but i have no control over that i just get dual notifications um Streamlabs triggers. If you authenticated with Streamlabs, um, then you have a couple of options. Um, you can trigger when you receive a tip, and this will be done on the exact currency. So if you are 88 bit music, it is 45567. <laughs> um, you can also trigger for charitable donations. And so if you are running a Tiltify campaign and you want alerts to go off, through Streamlabs, you can also have some very special animations go off in here for, um, you know, for for those donations. Uh, and then the last thing for channel options for for I mean, the trigger options is chat output. Um, so if you want the bot to say something before it's played or like right as it's queued, basically, um, you put that here. And if you want it to play something afterward, then it'll play the animation and then it'll spit this out. So I actually have this on BitBoing, uh, not there. And chat output is I do this and now I do that. <laughs> so, and that's basically it um, for trigger options. Okay, so you can see it's a, we're only halfway through this and there's so much to do with this bot. You can really like just about script anything that you want with it because of all of the options. So variations, variations are flipping fantastic. What this will allow you to do is not only have your, you know, first visual or your audio, but you can add other options to it. So it will basically randomize. So what I have is I have these deep thoughts. <laughs> this is terrible. Is the zebra white with black stripes or black with white stripes? Okay. And I recorded a buttload of stupid things like that. And I put them in this animation. 
Um, by default, the duration down here is going to match the initial duration. You can change it if you want. Um, here's how you add a new variant. It's at the bottom. Um, you would choose the visual or you could choose the audio um, that go with the variant. You know, the variant um, set the duration. You can even offset the audio uh, here. Um, and uh, <laughs> it's 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 really it, it's it's good. <laughs> Many um, plants are really farming us, giving us oxygen oh until we eventually expire and turn into mulch, which they can consume. Oh boy, that's dank. So, uh, but once you've set up your variant, you add it. Um, everything is randomized. There's no there's no order or rhyme or reason to it. Every time this animation is played, um, what it'll do is just pick one of them. It'll detect that you have variations and uh, and choose one of those, or it will choose the default, which would be uh, index zero. Um, so these are great for just adding a little something to it. Um, so I use it for the deep thoughts. Um, I know that uh, other streamers want to use it for like a D20 dice roll um, or uh, their own kind of, uh, you know, community driven Pokemon game. Uh, you can do that kind of stuff too. And it's great. Um, so captions are one option. Um, I don't think I actually have one with a caption right now to show you. So I'll maybe, I, I usually abduct my abduction animation for the, yeah, there we go. <laughs> um, so, so basically with the caption, you can put a caption on top of a, uh, an animation if you so choose to do so. So the thing is like, if you're doing an MP4 video and it's taking up the whole screen, it's not going to work. Um, you have to have some available space here on your canvas to allow for the caption because it will not be on top of your, uh, your video or GIF. Um, you can adjust all of this information, like the font color, the stroke color, which is the board, the border. You don't even have to have a border. You can set that to zero if you want, as you make these changes, they will reflect down here at the bottom. And so you can see what things look like. You can change the font. I have some pre-built fonts in here. Um, unfortunately, you can't like just choose one um, from your, uh, you know, your library, your personal library. A lot of these fonts are actually from uh, Google. So uh, you can bold the text. Like, this will show you exactly what it's going to look like on the screen. Uh, you can put it above or below. Uh, but yeah, and then when you test it, then you can see what it looks like, which is freaking kind of cool. <laughs> um, and the last feature, animation chaining is the best. So what this will let you do is play your animation and then quickly cue a list of animations behind it. So, for example, all these deep thoughts that I had, I didn't really have a trigger to know when it was coming. I need audio cues so that I pay attention because a lot of the animations that I trigger in my stream, I kind of need to, you know, uh, react to. So, uh, so what I did was I created a deep thoughts starter. This is the one that actually has the channel point triggers tied to it. So this one triggers for 1,250 channel points. When this is triggered, it will then chain deep thoughts, which then of course chooses a random uh, variant to play. So it's a really good thing to set up if you want to be able to um, have like, like say that dice roll, for example, you create the, the dice roll uh, animation that has all the variants for the different dice faces. And then you have um, like, a DM starter role and a player starter role, and you can then just have the chain. So you don't have to edit or clone all of that data. You can just, uh, you know, you can just set up the the chaining. Now, what I will say is that the it will be in the order in which they appear. So if you have multiple down here, it's going to be in in the order that you have placed them in. 
Um, so be careful with how you set them up. Um, they do tightly queue. So if you have, like, for example, the default in your bot settings is 5,000 milliseconds or five seconds in between animations, when you do this kind of chaining, it's one second. Um, so it gives you a little bit of a breather, but not so much that you're like, okay, now what's happening? Um, so there, there's no, yeah. Anywho, that is that is basically the features for uh, all the animations in the animation editor. Um, I hope that that was helpful and uh, will get you guys started and understanding all of the different options. Um, and uh, yeah, thanks.